this morning because he gave me this message to give to you, a message that's one of my mother's favorite scriptures, and I preach this in honor of her, uh, and I want to refresh you on some things. I preached this somewhat here some time ago, maybe a few years ago, but in this message and somewhat of it, but I want to make sure that your mind is refreshed, and we want to strengthen your mind this morning. And in in getting this message, I asked the Lord to give me the right words to say and to make sure that you are safe and your mind is secure during this time in our lives. We've never been through a time like this in our history in our lives individually, in our nation, in our world. But the Lord has saw fit to let it happen. He knew what was going to happen, and he knew, and he knows when it's going to stop. How many knows that today? How many knows that today? So in honor of my mom, I want to give you this message today and this scripture. Those of you who may be watching on mindglattidings.org, if you're watching this morning, we thank you for being in our house again, and this goes to you also. You're part of our family I thank you for you know, those who are watching the, the uh, messages online that we haven't been in church, but I've been giving messages online and gotten some feedback on those messages. And I thank you for listening to those messages online as we give them every week. First of all, I want to thank God for this scripture he's given me. The, the theme of this morning, I want to give this to you, is called Strengthening Your Mind. Strengthening Your Mind. We're going to be in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8, a familiar scripture. And if you're at home, get your Bibles out. But if you're here today, make sure you read this scripture while it's on the, on the board here. Because it's an awesome scripture. Again, this is one of my mom's favorite scriptures and one of mine too. Strengthening your mind. Strengthening your mind. And and a lot of people's minds need to be strengthened this morning. And I want you to be encouraged. Encouraged this morning by this message. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. And it reads as follows. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Dear Jesus, we thank you this morning for your blessings and thank you for this time. Thank you for blessing us to be back in service this morning. And I pray, Lord, for those who may be watching on mygladtidings.org that you encourage them also. I pray, Lord, for all the churches who are back today. I pray for their safety and their health. I pray for everyone to be encouraged today by this message of strengthening your mind. Lord, I don't preach in my own strength, but I preach in yours. And I'm thankful today that you gave me this message to give to your people on this coming back. And we praise you and give you thanks and praise. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Again, thank you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Strengthening your mind. That's my message this morning to you. And as we, we continue to go through this unprecedented time and era of our lives with this COVID-19, 
You know, our minds, and especially those who do not know the Lord, are having all sorts of thoughts that are irregular and irrational. You know, people all over the world are wondering and trying to come up with blames and theories of how all this got started and when all this pandemic will ultimately subside and when will this thing end and be in the past so the world can get back to its normal state of life. People's minds are going to places that they have never been before. Some desperate thoughts, some have desperate thoughts, some have thoughts of suicide. And there have been some that have carried out the action to that extent. Now, just recently, if, if you heard on the news, see on the news, you may have heard of a doctor, a female doctor was treating people with the coronavirus. She decided to take her own life. And it was sad. She decided to take her own life because she could not take the sight and the suffering of all the people that was coming into the hospital to be treated. It was so overwhelming to her and especially to her mind and her thinking. It was so overwhelming to her that her mind said, I cannot take this anymore. I'm going to take my life. And she did. For a lot of people, this is desperate times, especially financially. People are trying to come up with ways in their, uh, in their thinking of how to take care of themselves and their families. Just recently, businesses are opening back up gradually and people are going back to work. But, you know, but they're still the ones, they're still the ones who are still in desperate times today. The world is still in the state of shock. And, and millions of minds are in the state of wonder. But the only one who knows how this started and how it will end is our Father God himself. Amen? He is the Alpha and Omega and the beginning and the ending. And during this time of wonderment, during this time of people thinking, we need to put and keep our minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as I go further into this message, I want to preach about the Bible way of thinking and processing things in the mind. And as each of us know, man is a three-way or multilateral being. I say that this way, and that is that Every man is made up of the body, the soul, and the spirit. The body allows us to interact with the physical world. The soul allows us to respond to the intellectual and emotional world. The spirit allows us to relate to the spiritual realm. Each part of this organization or structure is extremely important. And necessary. Without the body, we would have no contact with the world. Without the soul, we would have no ability to think or feel. Without the spirit, we would not have the ability to connect or feel at one with the Lord. It's a fact that when we leave this world, the body ceases to be part of who we are. Even when the body is raised, it will be a different manner of body than the one we wear today. I'm so grateful for that. 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 44 says, So also is the new resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So if you're saved, 
which I hope all of you are, and I know all of you are. Your spirit has already been alive in Jesus and is sealed by him until the day of redemption. In other words, the physical body will be dropped away. I'm, I'm thinking about Doyle right now. His, his physical body has dropped away. I remember when Doyle used to, even at an older age, he can uh, climb those ladders. Who remember that? Lord Doyle can climb those ladders like crazy. I can imagine what he can do right now. His body has changed. And we'll, our physical body will be dropped and will be, we'll be changed and will be, be like his glorious body up there. The spirit has already been changed and what we are left with is the soul. The soul can also be called the mind. It is the seed of understanding. Our mind, our intelligence, the will and the emotions. It is where we think, we feel and where we decide. It is also the place where all the battles, our, our struggles, and conflicts we face, to face this life, begin. You see, the mind is the ultimate battleground of life. The Lord, the flesh, and the devil are battling for control of our minds. Let me say that again. The Lord, our flesh, and the devil are battling for control of our minds. So, so why does this battle rage there? Because the Bible says in Proverbs 23 and 7, I'm going to give you this, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. We need to understand that this battle that is raging that is raging in a mind is, our, is a spiritual battle. So ultimately, it is a battle between good and evil for the control of our lives. Since this is a spiritual battle, we must fight it with spiritual resources. Listen closely here. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to this flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Today, I want to let you know that we do not have to lose the battle for our minds. We do not have to be defeated in our walk with the Lord. You do not have to be a captive to anxiety and fear. You don't have to live a life controlled by the lust and desires of flesh. You can live your life under control of the Holy Spirit of God. Folks, you can win the battle. We are not defeated. The enemy is defeated. Amen. 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 And, and, and someone may ask how you, how you, how, how, how you might ask. How, how? First, first, it doesn't happen automatically. You have to take certain steps that will allow it to come to pass. First of all, biblically, Romans 12 and 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind, that you may prove what is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Being transformed by the renewing of your mind to the Lord's ways. I can think of Ephesians 4 and 23 that says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Peter, first, uh, 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 first Peter 1 and 13 says, therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
And I want you to consider this, folks. Consider this. Consider this. As we take the step in 1 Peter to get a grip, in other words, to get a grip on the mind, we put ourselves in a position to receive the ministry of the Lord as he renews the mind. The word transform in Romans and the word renewed in Ephesians are both passive voices. They are something to and in the child of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Secondly, we need to know that we do not have to do this alone. He will never leave us nor ever forsake us. And we have the Lord's promise in the matter also. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, today I want to take these verses we have read and show you Paul's plan for victory in the battlefield of mind. And I want to share with you several steps from the Apostle Paul that teaches us about strengthening this mind of ours. I want to encourage you today, as they did myself, and I pray that they will all help us build a wall of protection around our minds today. They will help us to achieve victory in the daily struggle we all face. And as Nehemiah did for the, the, the city of Jerusalem, we must build some fortified walls. Last week, I preached about biblical worship. And in, in, the, in this first portion, I want to dwell on the praise to our Lord. Verse 4 again of that, of that passage in Philippians said, First, we must build a wall of praise. He says in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Paul here is commanding the believers to rejoice. The word means to be glad or to delight in the Lord. And know this, know this. It is in the present tense, the active voice and imperative mood. This means that the believer is commanded to go on being glad in the Lord. Through all of this, through everything that we're going through in our world, our nation individually, we have to go on praising God. Now let's face it. Let's face something here. Much of life does not lend itself to our happiness. Yeah. In fact, when Paul wrote these words, he was locked up and constrained between two soldiers in a Roman prison when he wrote this. Still, Paul knew that regardless of the situations and circumstances of life, God never changes. Who knows that God never changes? And folks, during this season of this outbreak, the Lord still is the same. And he has never and never will change. He is still the same God who created the heavens and the earth. He's still the same God that created you and me. And he's still the same God who's going to see us through this. Amen. That's why we're told to rejoice in the Lord. You see, people will change. Circumstances and, and situations will change and life constantly changes. But the Lord, but the Lord never changes. Amen. So, 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 this, so since this is true, we can learn to rejoice in who he is, what he's done for us, and what he's doing in our lives. Even if the road is hard, remember that he has planned your path. Psalm 37, 23 says the Lord, that, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. 
He has promised to make all things work for our good. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, mm -hmm. to those who are called according to his purpose. Thank you, Lord. And he has promised to go with you through everything in life. Hebrews tells us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He has promised you abiding victory. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, I love this verse. It says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> And he has promised us that the destination will be worth every mile of the trip. Romans 8 and 18 says, and I love this verse too. It says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory <laughs> which shall be revealed to us. Mm -hmm. In us. Therefore, even when you can't be happy about your life, learn to be happy in the Lord. Build the wall of praise because he is still God. I said, folks, he is still God and worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Someone say worthy this morning. Then in verse 5, it says, well, then we must build a wall of patience. Oh, that's, that's, that's hard in this time. A lot of people are not patient during this time, but guess what? We have to be patient. Verse 5 says, let your gentleness be known to all men. You know, there's this word called moderation. It literally means gentle or gracious spirit. It has the idea of being patient with others, being gentle, of giving way to the rights and wishes of others in this life. We are to be gentle, meaning being a reasonable, being fair-minded, and, and being charitable, especially to those outside of the church and not just to fellow believers. And it does not mean a compromise in our spiritual life. In our spiritual guidelines, we cannot compromise. It does not mean, it, but, but, but I tell you what, it does mean that you have a willingness to take the back seat in favor of other people. That's hard for some people to do. This is the Ideal of Philippians 2 and 4 says, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So, so Paul is saying that the reality of our faith should be demonstrated in how we deal with other people. If the center point or focus of our lives is on ourselves, then when people hurt us or, or slight us or cross us in any type of way or do us in the wrong way, there'd be a desire to retaliate and seek revenge. Paul wants us to get the focus off of ourselves and get it on others. When we are focused on those, on those around us, we will be less likely to be hurt by what other people do. What they say won't sting us or offend us so bad. How they act can be passed and looked over more easily. And, and, and when we adopt this mentality of self-love that is all around us, we will look at the things people do and say as a personal Attack. Has anybody ever felt that way before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 some things, some people say may feel or seem like a personal attack. It will cause us to, to wear our feelings on our sleeves and to be more easily hurt by the words and actions of others. 
This will cause the problems in the mind as we'll dwell and, and, and we will dwell on what was done or what was said about us. If we can learn to accept others just as they are and overlook how they act and what they do, it will protect the mind from dwelling in negative areas. How many know people are going to act like they are? Yeah. It'll build a wall of protection around the mind that others cannot pierce through or penetrate. So here's the bottom line here. Here's the bottom line. If we can learn to live in genuine contentment, then it will not, it will not matter what anyone says or does. The mind will be protected. It'll be protected from the evil, from the devil, and the evil that it, look, it likes to find in others. I know some people that find negative things in others. That's all they do. Because they think they're all of that. Oh, yes, I've seen people, I know people who just look on the negative things of others and didn't realize how bad they were. And think about this. Think about this. Our enemy, Satan, loves nothing better than to get your eyes off of Jesus. He, he wants you to get your eyes off of Jesus, our Savior, and, on, and put your mind on the faults of others. The flesh loves nothing. I'm talking about the flesh now. The flesh loves nothing better to go along with the devil and his antics and stir up trouble. I'm just preaching, folks, telling you the truth. And when this happened, the mind is in danger. Amen. And then we must build the wall of prayer. Five through seven of those verses, the last part of that verse says, the Lord is at hand, and that's true. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, verse 6 warns us against the dangers of worry. The word anxious or the word care for in another Bible version has the ideal of anxiety. I've never seen so much anxiety before in my life during this time. I've seen so many people wherever I, where I work at, there are so many people full of anxiety. It refers to a state of mind that is troubled that is shaken or, or, or disturbed over the events and circumstances of life. Now, now, there's nothing wrong with being concerned. We all have our concerns about certain things, our jobs, our finances, our homes. Even now, the, the, the seniors are, are concerned and have anxiety about their schools having graduating and stuff. And so they figure out different kinds of ways for them to graduate. It is when your concerns have you that the problems begin to arise. Let me say that again. It is when the problems have you that the problems begin to arise. Worry is so dangerous. Because it allows the mind to conceive false notions about God. Worry says God is dead. Or if there is a God, he obviously doesn't care about me and my situation. Both of these statements are false, folks. God is alive. Amen. Come on, who knows that today? Oh, yeah. Say it with me, God is alive. God is alive. Say it again, God is alive. God is alive. Hallelujah. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Therefore he is able, also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. And through all of this outbreak, God does, does and still 
cares for you. Amen. He still and does cares for us. And when the problems of life come our way, we're given some precious help in these verses. In verse 5, Paul lets us know that the Lord is near. He's always near. Not just his second coming, but he is always near now to his children. In verse 6, he lets us know that we, we need to exercise the tool of prayer. Paul speaks of prayer, supplications, and requests. He advises us to turn our worries into prayers. These might be thought of like general praying or specific praying or detailed praying. But the main thrust of this verse, the main thrust of this is that instead of worrying, the believer is, is to demonstrate his faith in the power and will of God by seeking the Lord in prayer. And then in verse 6, after we pray, he says he wants us to develop a thankful heart. After he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, he says, with thanksgiving. So, so regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the situations you face in life, we have to learn to praise the Lord through them all. That's hard for even some Christians to do. Nothing brings him nearer or, or, or drives the devil away any faster than genuinely thanking God with a thankful heart. And, and, you know, I'm a witness. I'm a witness that the Lord can give you peace through the circumstances of life. If we keep thanking him. If we keep giving him the glory. If we keep giving him the honor. For who he is. And his many blessings toward us. See, the Lord's promise to us is that he will replace our worries with his peace when we come before him in trusting humbling humbling and a humble prayer in a sense the word where it says guard in verse 7 it means to keep us it means to garrison or to build a fort around or to post a guard the Lord promised us to post a guard, and I love this, to post a guard around the hearts and mind of the person who trusts him with the needs of life, and he will give us peace. I love that. And God's peace is different from the world's peace. True peace is not found in positive thinking. In absence of conflict or in good feelings, it comes from knowing all points bulletin here. It comes in knowing that God is in control. Y'all believe that today? Amen. God is in control. Even through all of this, he is in control. Oh. See, one thing I know is our residency and our citizenship in Christ's kingdom is sure. It is secure. It is secure. Our destiny is set and we have victory over sin. So, Here's what I want you to do. I want you to let God's peace guard your hearts and your mind against anxiety instead of worrying yourself, instead of worrying yourself, instead of worrying yourself sick about things you can't change. We have to learn to lean on the Lord in prayer. Let's build a wall of prayer. And then, then this, 
Last thing here. Then build the wall of purity. <clears throat> all of these words. All of these words. Now I'm going to read verse 8 again. It says, finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Some other version says, think on these things. All these words he used in his verse is a picture of the word of God and it's true. You don't see nothing negative here. Everything is positive. And since the Bible is true, everything it says fits within the categories mentioned by Paul. It says it is honest, it's honorable. It is just, meaning it is right. It's pure, meaning it is holy and clean. It's lovely, meaning it's beautiful. It is of good report, meaning of good reputation. It is full of virtue, meaning it is full of excellence and praise. That which leads to praise and worship of God. His praise leans towards worship. So what we have here is a call to fix our minds according to the things of God. The source for finding our peace about those things is in the word of God. Here I go again talking about the word of God. Who's been reading the word of God since we've been, we haven't been seeing each other? Folks, read the holy word of God. In other words, if we'll fill our minds with the words of God, there'll be no room for evil, no room for anxiety or worry, no room for fear, no room for vengeance, no room for confusion, and no room for trouble. A mind filled with the Bible scriptures and led by the word of God is a stable mind. If you want a stable, fixed mind, only place, uh, the only place to get it is in the Holy Word of God. We are to take the initiative here and force the mind to dwell on the Bible and what it says. Instead of allowing the mind to be, to be, to be run by evil or gossip or to others and, and what they're doing and their problems. A mind that is filled and saturated with and fixed upon the word of God is a stable mind. And, and, and this is something that you must do for yourself. We wonder why we don't get much out of preaching in church sometimes, especially with churches. They're not applying the word. The answer lies in the fact that every day <clears throat> we allow our minds to feed on the filth and the troubles of the world and to dwell on our problems and the problems of other people. If we would give as much energy to dwelling on the word of God, on the, on the word of God day by day, it will transform <clears throat> our time in the Lord's house in a beautiful way. As I end today, as I conclude this message today, if you're watching today, and you're in his house today. Your mind is a precious gift of God. 
It can be used for good or for evil. And all the forces of good and evil are battling for your mind today. It's battling all the time. Who wins the battle is always determined by you. <clears throat> We're told in the Bible that we need to strengthen the mind. It is our job individually, and it cannot be passed to someone else to do it. We have to make the urgency, and we need to make the, hallelujah, I want you to know what, I want you to hear what I'm speaking about today. Sometimes we want others to help us. It takes us individually, and we don't go to God when we need to. How many know the Lord is our only strength? Come on, who knows that today? He is our strength, and we need to go to God individually. We cannot go to no other human being. Let God give us a peace that passes all understanding. And this is a very critical matter, because how you think in your mind determines how you will live your life. In this last scripture, Proverbs 4 and 23, and remember this, it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence, Diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. We are to see that our minds are in love with Jesus. And until the mind is settled, all of life is out of control. I challenge all of you today, you who may be watching, you who are in this house, to strengthen your minds. I challenge you to do that. Praise Lord. <clears throat> you may be watching today and you may not know Jesus. Let you know he is our strength and he can be your strength today. He can make the difference in your life and give you peace that you've been longing for. Some of you may be watching, may be going through some mind things. Maybe some of you here. But why don't you let Jesus take over your life today and take over your mind today? He can keep your mind in perfect peace. Keep your mind stayed on him. And we have a Jesus, we have a Savior who is able to do that. During this time of what we're going through, we need Jesus. Some of us need Jesus more than ever before. The world needs Jesus more than ever before. Our nation, from the top brass to the bottom, we need Jesus. How many know we need Jesus? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. You need Jesus today. We all need Jesus in our minds and hearts to make sure that we are safe. Our minds are safe. And knowing that He is the one who knows when is this is going to end. So if you need Jesus now, I want you to pray with me as I pray and as our church, as we, as we agree together. Why don't you meet him now? Because you don't want to meet him later. Tomorrow's not promised. Bow your heads with me. And if you're listening today and you're looking at this message online, Bow your heads with me as I pray and be sincere about your prayer of receiving Jesus. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this moment in my life. I ask you, Father, to give me peace in my mind. I ask you, Father, to save my life. Come into my heart. Be the peace that I need, Father. 
I thank you, Father, for this time in my life where I can say yes to you. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. And Father, I thank you again because I know, Father, I can ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and my shame. Give me a new walk. Give me a new talk. Give me a new way of living. And I thank you, Father, for doing this for me and coming into my life. Thank you for giving me a clean heart so I might serve you. And I thank you. Thank you for forgiving me and taking away my sins. And I will live for you forever. Amen. Amen. And if you were saved today, Lord blessed you to be saved today. Get your good Bible study. Get your good Bible. Start reading. Go to a Bible-believing church. And know that you are in line for eternal life. Someone say praise Lord this morning. Give God a hand praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you.